Welcome back to another Let's Play episode of Banjo Kazooie, and this is episode 17. There's two things I want to talk about. First of all, I want to play Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I've always wanted to play it since I actually looked at it, and I noticed it wasn't a rated, rated E or it wasn't rated for kids. I'm sorry. It's that. How to explain this? I don't. I honestly don't know. It's like I don't know what it is, but it's it's an Nintendo 64 game that has a lot of vulgarity in it, and that's not really normal. Of course, if you play Duke Nukem, that is normal, right? There's a lot of rated M games for Nintendo 64, but the way that Conquer's Bad Fur Day was, it looks like it's it's the same people who made Banjo Kazooie. You can tell by the graphics and everything. I believe it's hopefully it's the same people who made it. I'm not too sure. I'm not gonna go into research on that. Not at this moment, but it just looks like it's, it looks like it's the first game before Banjo Kazooie. I'm not too sure. Like I said, I'm not gonna do research on it, but just based on that, I want to play ba Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and I know it has a lot of vulgarity in it because I've seen the top 10 weirdest or WTF moments. I wonder when that you had to battle a giant piece of poo that he calls himself like the King of Poo or something like that, and he swears as he is singing. There's that's the WTF moment right there. So, based on that, most of it that just confirms my my what's it called? My attention, or I would, I just want to get it honestly, because I would love to make a let's play on that if I could find out where I can get it. And I wish that Microsoft would. Put, put that on the Xbox Live Arcade because I can't find it on there. If you can if if it's there, tell me what's the name of it, but I cannot find it. I looked for it and I couldn't find it. So I, I wanna play I wanna do like a let's play of Congress Bad for a day. And that'll be very interesting to do. And oh my god, say a grumbling got me. And the second thing I wanna talk about was that the little fender bender that I mentioned in the last episode. It was not. It was completely not my fault, and I, I would not say it is the fault of the other driver. I'm a, I'm a forgiving person, but I don't know whether or not to say it was his. Could say that his fault, or that it was basically sorry, basically just an accident, like it like it usually is. All I know is that I was I got out of a valvoline or whatever the. Engine oil change places, and freaking! <laughs> it, it wasn't like two minutes after I got out of there. I get, I get out of there. I'm on the left, on on the right lane, and take a ride to my favorite gas station. Just done. I was right by a gas station. You know, if I would have gone to that gas station, the accident could have been avoided, but it could have been happened to another car. So I'm pretty much glad it was my my, my truck because my truck's not suffer any damage. Um, as of that point, apparently. So, as I waited, there was, I don't know what, what I don't know whether or not it's the instinct for a lot of drivers, but if there's a gap between you and the driver ahead of you, you go up just a teeny bit. I don't know why. It's just like a little, it's like an instinct of some sort. So I, I do that. I go a little bit forward, even though it has nothing to do with the story. I just go a little forward, and then I stop, and the car behind me, I look at the rear view. I look actually look at the rear view. Rear view mirror. There's there's a lot of words I can never pronounce correctly. Like wet rag. It's, it's something to do with the R's and the W's. I guess I can never pronounce it quite correctly as I try the first time. I accept that, but it gets annoying at times. But it does get funny at this point. So yeah, I look at the rear view mirror, and I see the car behind me just before he actually hit me. It's kind of funny. I, I saw him slowing down, so I was like, okay, it's all, it's all normal. I'll look back for it, and then bonk. <laughs> or dunk, I don't know what sound effect you wanted me to say there. And he he hits the the back of my truck, and I was like, WTF? And I stopped. We both we basically both stood there for another 30 seconds or so, and the light turns green. And I figured I had to report this. I just had to, because I, I just... They didn't want to tell, tell my father back at home and then tell him that I didn't report it or anything. So, I go, I, that's the first thing I did. I called my father and he told me that I um, called the call 911 and tell him to put a little report on this. 
and I did so. That's pretty much the first time I've ever called 911 in my entire life. So I was still shaking of the whole, um, what's it? Yeah, I was still whole shaking a little bit from the incident because I've been into two fender benders. One of them I actually caused, and the second one, this one's not my fault. So, continuing on. Well, first of all, a little side note, I'm gonna die three times in this in this place. You're gonna see how. There's number one. Yeah. This is why I hate Ru Rusty Bucket Bay. The first time I've actually done it, I did a complete, I took, did a little complete run through, and I actually got everything without dying. But this one, it's just not my luck. So, we, I call 911, I tell him what happened, took him five minutes to get here, I'm still shaking a little bit, because I never really called 911, as well as that, it's been the second fender bender I've been in, and I'm pretty much like an, an experienced driver when it comes to handling situations like that. So, just, just wait for them to come, and they, they arrived, and in five minutes, the guy behind me goes into the gas station, even though I never liked that gas station, and then I had to wait till the officer signals the, the other drivers behind me to stay back, because it was a busy street, of course, and I'm basically blocking traffic, but I couldn't take the right turn. I wanted to go reverse five minutes early, but they just didn't let me. So now I just, so I drive into the gas station, they take the numbers, they take the information, we gave them the things, and the officers gave us two choices. We could just exchange insurance information and be on with our day, or we could do t exchange information, and then we give them a ticket, the driver who hit me. That's funny how I die right there. But the thing is, no damage was done to my truck. We looked at his car. It had a, he had a small dent on the uh, front bumper. It was plastic. He had a standard car that had a clutch and everything, and it was basically made of plastic. The car itself. I don't. I don't know what people are trying to do when they save money or the manufacturers when they do this. But apparently, getting plastic cars is a new thing. Cheaper, efficient, whatever you want to call it. But having a standard car would save you gas mileage. But at the same time. He was still actually learning how to drive the standard car with the clutch and everything. He already had to replace the clutch. And, yeah, since it was made out of plastic, the little emblem was made out of plastic. That broke off. The bent, the front bender got bent or whatever. Got a little dent in it. And we decided not to give him a ticket. My dad actually drove to the gas station that I was at to help help me out with everything else and I was glad I was glad he was there because I would not know what to say at that point and what to do and it was kind of awkward we actually made some, me and the driver and most of my father made small conversations going on about our day and especially with the car and all that good stuff because what can you say at that point try to line up the mood just have a conversation even though it was just a small fender bender and a lot of drivers at the side were just staring wondering what's going on and all that stuff it's, it was just awkward, so the best thing we could do was just have small conversations. No, none of us were angry, none of us were upset, it's more or less that it's like any other normal day, just a little, small little conflict that could have been avoided, but sadly it did not, and we just handled it in the best situation, so that's a pretty good day right there. And we decided not to give him a ticket because we didn't want to have him to call. What's it called? I can't remember what I was going to say. Well, first of all, he, has, he would have to pay for the, the little replacement or fixings of his front front bender or... I, I, can't, I, can't, I, don't want, I don't want to call it a bender anymore. What was it? I cannot remember what it was called. Honestly. Ah, oh, well, I know, I know nothing about cars. If you were talking to me about cars, I would just completely go, go blank and just go on with a different topic because anything about cars I have no idea what is going on I only know the model the year of my truck of course for the registration purposes but any other car I could say a Toyota and then I would not know what other brand of car there is I know there's four Toyota <laughs> Mitsubishi I don't know I just I am not a car person honestly I just drive my truck and if it breaks down if I can't use it anymore it cannot be fixed and I move on to a different car 
and then I'll ask my dad what type of car I would get and what can I get with the money I have or something like that. I honestly, I don't know anything about cars. I really don't want to learn about cars unless if I actually have to because I just don't I just don't want to bother with that. Honestly, I'm just being honest with you. I don't know what kind of car it was. It was just his car was standard. And we, of course, we didn't want to give him a ticket because first of all, yeah, the little dent on his front on the front car with the little plastic grills on the side and the broken emblem or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we didn't want to give him a ticket on top of those repairs and especially when it's it's under their parents' name and he makes a payment so I don't I don't know how it's gonna go about it at home at his house but we didn't want to raise the stress at least they could be grateful that we didn't give him a ticket even though he caused the little or the little small fender bender but yeah honestly I'm not a bitter person I'm more of a forgiving person only except if I actually am holding a grudge and I'm not that forgiving I'm gonna be honest with you but I'm not the type I'm not the type of person who would do that so, I don't know about you, honestly, I'm just going to say that. that. I just, I'm just trying to continue on with the whole commentary without focusing too much on the game. Even though I did die three times in the stupidest way ever. But, yeah. I feel sorry for the guy though. Well, at least, at least he didn't do a little hit and run, otherwise, then I, yeah, that would have gotten more trouble. So, I'm gonna hit that fan. I'm just gonna continue on, just talking about the game. You gotta have to talk about the game at some point or another. And I already completely rambled on throughout the whole commentary. We got 65 seconds just, just to get to the jiggy. So I jump, and I fly, and I jump. And at this point, I have no idea what happened. I think I pressed the angle too much, and that made me jump. Or made me stare, and I got hit. I'm so glad I didn't fall out. If I did, I would have died and we got mad again because that was the fifth time total. Three times only in this level in that little part. I swear to that. I keep thinking that in the Test 64, if you were to die, all the notes were reset and you have to grab them all again. But I just don't remember. I need to play the Test 64 Battle Kazooie again, even though the freaking joystick is broken. Because. I, like I said so many times, you press it down so hard, you think you go faster, but you're just going the same exact speed. But as a child, we did not know that, and we just did it our way. And that caused the joystick to break, and yada yada yada. You know, they should remake, they should actually remake the old Nintendo 64s or any other the game, not the console itself, but the controllers, the accessories, and everything else that goes along with it, because... Yeah, there, it's a good market because there's a, there's companies out there that are actually making Super Nintendo Nintendo games, and a lot of people are actually reserving it and buying it. The old graphics, the old 8 bits, and the old styles. People are actually buying that. I would buy it if I actually had a Nintendo 64 or uh, Super Nintendo, but sadly I don't. And there's a jet plane flying in the background. I really hope you can't hear it. If you can, then I'm sorry. Well, beating this game, or beating this level in 36 minutes, I really hate Rusty Bucket Bay. I never explained why, though. It's basically the worst level in Banjo Kazooie. A lot of people deemed it as the worst level. I see it as the worst level. I see it as a cool level, but I still see it as a worst level because the whole fans and the whole me mechanisms that you have to go through, the whole poisonous pollution water. It's just that back in the Nintendo 64 era, it was really hard to get through, especially the mechanisms within the Nintendo 64 controller, that if you don't do it right, you get hit by the fan, you die. And I remember those days, I always die at that part. So I make sure I grab all the notes before I do anything else, so if I were to die, I would not have to collect notes again. I still honestly think that that's what was the case back then in Nintendo 64. If you were to die, you would lose all the notes. So I break the little grill. And I'm going up, going up, going up. Let's see, let's see. Up, oh, third level, third level of water. Of course, uh, you can use that to get through the door, but that was not my case. I did not want to do that. I want to go swimming down, because I'm going to show you the, what's behind the third room. But, sadly, I won't have enough time to do that, because I only have 10 seconds left on the clock. So, I'm going to end it off with a little tiny cliffhanger. But it's not that big of a deal. So I will got sorry guys, I'll see you in the next episode.